Five Knot Square Inc., uh, Gennaro's Five Knot Square, owner Jerry Riccio has uh, filed an application before the Boston License Board for a seven day all alcohol beverage license to be exercised at the above premise, which is Five Knot Square. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. Uh, good to see everybody tonight. For the record, my name is uh, Daniel Toscano. I'm the attorney. I represent to my immediate right, Gary Riccio, who's the owner of Gennaro's Restaurant located at Five North Square. I do have, Mr. President, for your records, his, uh, the license and hearing date, which was actually last week. And behind there is uh, public notice that went out to all the neighbors, the addresses that went out to uh, approximately 100 uh, of spotters which are located on not especially not square um garden court street moon street little print street so we pretty much covered everybody in addition uh, as a requirement for the boston licensing board you need to send to your immediate spotters which are the folks that really invite your property to touch your property certified letters to um, them to inform them of uh, your petition which went out to uh, the immediate but is also the uh, second request um, in short, um, we had applied for an all alcohol beverage uh, license to be um, issued at this particular premises. Um, as everybody may or may not know, Gennaro's Restaurant has been there since 2008. Prior to Gennaro's Restaurant, it was Five Knots Square Restaurant that operated for approximately 30 years in business as a restaurant. Prior to that, it was a candy store. Always was a commercial, uh, commercial space at the location. It was a licensed premises since, I believe, 1981, if, I, if I'm correct, with 83. So it's been a licensed president bearing wine. Uh, Jerry had the fortunate opportunity to purchase the property and the restaurant. He's been the owner and operator of, uh, of the restaurant there, which kind of changed his theme. And this is why we have applied for a full liquor license, because our clientele has changed. It is no longer from what it was as a, a more of a mom and pop, uh, family style Italian restaurant more towards a upscale fine dining um, business and we're getting our clientele has changed from that mom and pop family style restaurant to more professional corporate clientele and this all alcohol liquor license on it in regards to a public need. A lot of requests for an alcoholic beverage um, when they come in there and we want to be able to provide that extra service to uh, this different type of clientele. And we, we certainly heard over the last hour of the noise and what's happened in the neighborhood and I've been before the neighborhood associations many times representing petitioners and also sitting at the board and as a resident, there are noise issues. Um, I, I think it's quite clear from listening to Sergeant Lee and the captain that we, we, we do have problems with professionals coming in the neighborhood. But as everybody knows, Mr. Riccio runs a several establishments in the neighborhood, never any violations um, at his particular neighborhood. He's taken some eyesores here in the, the North End and, is, and made them beautiful, increased the value of these properties, made some businesses uh, very attractive, and he's proven to be a valuable asset to the neighborhood. I don't have to sit here and tell you about uh, Mr. Riccio, but he's been in the business uh, well over 30 years, owner and operating many establishments. So. We're seeking our approval for uh, an all alcohol uh, beverage license. Um, I can tell you we had our hearing. One is not available at the licensing board. The supply at the license board for an all alcohol liquor license is, is none. There's none available. I don't believe at this point none was turned. None of them were turned in. Um, so it's one of those things you have to get your application in in order to be ready. It's almost like <coughs> at the right time and place if and when an application does come available. I'm here to answer any questions in regards to the establishment. Any questions? I'm going to do oh, the yeah. council first and then we'll... All right. Andy. Is there anybody who keeps the same hours? Yes. Good job. Good job. 11 to 1. 11 to 1. That's seven days? Yeah. I have a question about... So when you go to the licensing board, or when you went, um, what do they tell you? Is it a vote that they do? They, they don't take a vote. They take votes on Thursdays. Uh, the vote was deferred, but they usually, after a vote is taken, they usually hold it within for about 30 days. If no license is available, you just get a denial without prejudice, saying that, hey, no license is available, you deny it. You have the right to reapply. 
and what you see is a lot of business owners just constantly keeping their application pending, just in case you don't know when is when is going to is pop in. And when you reapply, you don't have to do this process. Again. So when we're voting, it's not just for that thirty days, but it's for correct. So you can keep it pending. Correct. Keep, keep, keep it in the queue. Keep it in the keep it pending. If you do not reapply, then your license is no longer available. If one happens to become available, so. The hours will be 11 to 1, seven days. Right. As of right now, his um, beer and wine license is a one. Is a one. It's a one o'clock. We'd love to keep the same hours at the establishment. I have a question. Mama Maria's R uh, tools. What are their hours of operation? Uh, I, I think R tools has a two o'clock closing hour. I don't know about Mama Maria. Do they both have all out? I think they both have all out. R tools does. No, yeah. sure. yeah. Yeah. Mama Maria has a two. Okay. Anyone else on the council have any questions? Mr. Riccio, when you were here in 2008, and as I recall, you said there would be no bar in there. I said I recall that you said there would be no bar. It would be a service bar, but no yes. seat bar. And right now, there's, there's like a five seat bar. So well, how did that permission shift from a service bar only with no seating to you decided you were going to put five seats along that? I had seating capacity in there. It was originally, and if I, and it originally, I believe the seat capacity was 103. There's a service bar upstairs with no seats on it. This bar, I believe, it was other than fixing it to and bringing it to the 21st century. I believe the the prior applicant, uh, prior owner, had a bar, but you just couldn't see it. The windows were closed down. Wasn't utilized. It's more of a service bar. There are five bar, five or six uh, seats there. Um, we would love to keep the seats there. They're there. The occupancy is 103, and we'd like to maintain that seating capacity. Um, it's generally not used as a bar with um, people hanging out having drinks, but more of a, a waiting area, maybe a glass of wine or so, but really not used as, as a bar atmosphere. I think one of, one of my concerns is we often give permission for something based on the word of the other. They promise they're going to abide by a good name agreement. They promise a lot of the service part no seating bar. And we rely on that because we have no other enforcement powers. And then we see suddenly there's five tall bar seats and a tall bar. There's, there's a, a bar down the basement in there. And yeah, the first floor where I can see it. Yeah, but I have walked up to see the seat people. But what I'm saying is my recollection is representation is made with a service bar only. We trusted you on that. And very quickly, I remember seeing it about 2010 was a full seating bar. So I'm a little bit concerned that I don't you, you, take to the, the, you, you take your word to this council so lightly that you change it when it makes you know, commercial. I think change it, there were no seats. I always had seats in there. So when I opened in well, I'm, my representation is that you told us that it would be a service bar only when we gave you permission for the, when you came before us last time in 2008. And it's when it became profitable to make it into a seating bar, that's what you did. It's both. Without any coming back to this council and informing us you intended to do that. So I, I laid out the, the, I as, as, as justification for my vote, probably against your application. Yeah, well, I didn't see any difference. I understand, it, it, and it's an establishment with the five seat. You can't have full dinner there, so like many of the other restaurants in the neighborhood. And then I understand your, your point, Bill, enough that the gate the answer or, uh, to go around it, but you can't have uh, full service for dinner at the at the, at the bar area. So, so we be serving alcohol without for you. I mean, so you, you could, absolutely. I mean, you, the license does not, I don't believe the license restricts you to serve um, alcohol. Well, I don't know if that's a provision. I believe most, yeah. I believe most alcohol, all out licenses allow you to serve all alcohol oh. at the bottom without food. But I can serve food there too. I'm allowed to serve food there. Yes. Yeah. 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 Anyone else have any questions? Yeah. Would it be reasonable to ask that alcohol not be served without food? No. I mean, certainly, I understand it. It's something that you, you can't ask. I mean, it's almost impractical, I think, to really enforce and maintain. You know, people want to go, and if they either before dinner or after dinner, if they're in the establishment, want to have a drink and not sit at at the dining table. So, well, you have to go to the licensing board and change the policy. Like I said, typically the all out don't require food to be served. The beer and wine do because they issue to restaurants most. Mostly restaurants serve beer and wine, and they don't want people to just go in a restaurant, and sit down at a table, not order food, and just order and order beer and wine. If you want, if you want to say I'm saying, going. See the all alcohol. Well, we wouldn't want to serve just alcohol on the tables. No, I know you're a restaurant too, but what, what you're saying is, um, 
the bar area is going to be a bar area. If you have all out, you're going to serve my team. There be four people go sit down to drink. I assume that's what I used to drink a lot. I don't drink anymore. But you sit down at the bar before you before you dine. You have a martini, and then you go sit down and have dinner. In other words, if you were to sit, in other words, it, it doesn't make sense in, in, in this regard. You sit down at the bar, and before you eat, you're going to have a drink. And what do you say? Oh, you have to learn appetite up there and have dinner. You know what I mean? So if they go on a president, they can't serve you a, a martini unless you have something to eat at the bar. Or, um, what's another example in my fence? I'm um, 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 Rico. Or, um, okay. Or trust us. Sure. Sure. Yeah. They can if they'd like, but it's not a requirement. Okay. 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 Any other councils have any other questions? I'm just curious, do you operate any currently any all out places? Yes, I have three, three other licenses at Florentine, the Cafe Victoria, and the Cigar, Stanza Cigar. Have you ever had any like maybe any? There's been issues with just the operation of those lights. Has been no uh, no problems. Uh, Mr. No. Riccio is a lifelong resident of the neighborhood and lives on Hanover Street. Um, so he's close by his office is uh, across the street from his residence. He spends well over forty hours a week in all of his establishments. Uh, so very well run establishments. I, I don't have to say I think everybody in the neighborhood knows how well he is established and it's uh, run. No violations, haven't been any issues with uh, Mr. Riccio. All right, Marie, you have a question? No, I, I want to say something. Tony, the answer to your question is to Stanos, which does a phenomenal business. Phenomenal. 70% of the people in that in that restaurant are residents in the area. You cannot go in that place and sit at the bar unless you eat. And it's a full liquor license. And that's a full liquor license because I'm in there constantly. And they that's go completely different lines out than what we have done here. Fine. Completely. The license you're applying for does not require you to serve food. It's, it's just an individual policy. He will serve food, but it doesn't require him. It's, it's a business decision, Tony. That's correct. That's all. For the record, it's not my restaurant. It's kind of just. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying then that he could make it, he could make that his policy, but he's not doing that tonight. Correct. Anyone else? Anyone else have questions? Yeah, Very I want to well. yeah. ask another question. Now, Jerry, let's say Jerry gets this full liquor license, right? Now, let's say I'm Paolo. Well, my attitude is going to be, if he can get it, why can't I get it? Then somebody else that owns a restaurant, and we're going to go around, so we're going to be one big drinking hole. That's what it's going to come down to. Hot liquor, I drink hot liquor. And I know it's a lot more effective than Soft 40 liquor. volume. Well, I, I think the issue comes down to the supply in the city of Boston, which is that there's not, I can tell you, there's none available. There's no, and the rare full liquor licenses really come available. I think the last two we had in the neighborhood, whereas Tresker and Mark is on Richmond Street were the last two, I think, that came from the La Familia. La Familia at one yes, might have been turned over, and I, I'm not sure how long ago. So the very few, you know, in, in the years. The application is for a new license. Now, if, you, if you purchase a license, if you purchase, come back here if we purchase a license, it. then we would it's a whole new application. We'd have to come back before the Naval Association to seek a transfer of the license within the establishment. Now, if, and this may be a question on someone's mind, I'm sure it is, if one is available with the licensing board and it's granted to Mr. Riccio, his current beer and wine license needs to go back to the city. However, if he purchases one, that beer and wine license, he can sell it off or transfer it to another establishment. I think if he gets an alcohol license, the city takes away their beer and wine. Actually, yeah. yeah. But, um, are there people like in the queue ahead of them that would get forward? Oh, I, I can't tell you. I, I don't know who, who applied for all alcohol liquor licenses. I mean, I'm sure. Establishments keeps their licenses uh, applications pending just in case. 
They do it based on need too, Phil. Yeah. So uh, if, if, if there's a neighborhood, and if there's an application in Charlestown that's an area that probably you can use it, it doesn't necessarily go by seniority. So it doesn't mean like, hey, you put your application in first. So in the queue, they do it based on need or they try to do it. Oh, so it goes on the public need, it goes on the character of the individual, and certainly if they're trying to promote a certain section of yeah. the Boston area, <coughs> that, like Steve said, needs one, so, you know, that, that community would benefit from it. I'm sure they should take that. <coughs> Jerry, would, would you be willing, just as uh, obviously we have a problem in this neighborhood, the, the, residents, well, the, 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 the residents are quite upset about, you know, the, the, the behavior of a lot of people. I like, personally don't necessarily think that people coming out of your establishment are rowdy and reckless people, but would you be willing to not serve alcohol if there was no food being served? Would you be willing to change that kind of policy? I like, yeah, I, would you consider it? Would, would it yeah, be considered on the vote? Would you consider it as, as I mean, I mean, like, a lot of babysitting help and yeah. some are waiting on a bar for a table. We have a waiting line too sometimes. Right, but, but in other words, someone's not just coming in there for, for a drink. They would be either waiting oh, for, yeah, a right, for a table. Oh, yeah, right, for a table. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, we want to make it just a bar. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, so, so in other words, bar. if right. someone just walks in off the street and just wants to sit down and have one martini and, and leave, it would be prohibited under your policy that there would be food either yeah. coming or... It could be a policy, and also if, if the board felt necessary to put a proviso, the licensing board can put any proviso if see fit. If that's something that the board would be able to vote and make a recommendation uh, that it's a good candidate for an all alcohol or beverage license, with the proviso that all alcohol be served with food, or, or no alcohol without food, that could be a proviso that's put on the license. So, I mean, if that's the vote that the board would, would like to take. I don't. I, 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 I don't know if around the corner, they're open until 2 and they can serve to anybody. I just, they're going to close an hour earlier. I, I don't. Mama Maria's had a look at us across the street. I mean, there are a lot of liquor licenses in the neighborhood no one knows about. Massimino's has, but no one knows. They close at 11.30. I mean... I live on the street. I know. You, Don't tell me 11.30. Well, whatever. Getting drunk is getting drunk. I'm, you drink I'm, wine I'm, or water. I don't care. The bottom line, Stephen, is the cops have made it very clear. The more alcohol licenses there are, the more problems are going to happen. All, I didn't make this up and pull it out of the sky. They, they also, did, they also said. just said the restaurants aren't part of the problem. Oh, so we can sit here and debate all day, but I'm not because it's 8 10. I'm not. Oh, well, I mean, they've been a problem on my street. Does anyone, anyone else have a question? You're the first time I've ever heard my uh, complaint about Massimino's. No, are they coming from maybe Massimino's, not station? Who knows? They could be coming from here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Down at the court street. Who knows? Does anyone else have a question or? Hi. Just use your name, your name and your name, where you live. Well, you don't have to give us an exact address. I'm <laughs> on Salem Street. Um, one of the things I would question, um, I understand the putting food with drinks, but sometimes if I'm going out, I might put in a, for example, reservation at, at Neptune's. Neptune is right now. I'm sitting there going down the street. I'll go to the two corner and have a drink at the bar. I'm not going to get food there because I'm leaving to go somewhere else. Or I probably ha went out for dinner, had dinner, had, had a few drinks, having one drink before I go home. But if there's closing at 11 o'clock or, you know, some of the restaurants closing at 11, I'm not going out to the bars and going and drinking afterwards. But putting that policy, I don't necessarily think it necessarily helps because there are actually valid reasons to do that. If for me, someone like me, I'll, I'm responsible. I live in the neighborhood. I own my condo. but. What you see also too in the neighborhood, other than some younger professionals that are going out to the Daniel Hall area, the, the you know the West End area, we have a lot of professionals that are maybe a little older. That, for example, myself, I would not go to any of those bars. I'm not 21 years old, and I wish I was. However, if I go out with the guys and have a few drinks, it's to some of it's to these establishments that are in the neighborhood that I can go out and have a cocktail, and I'm usually home very early, but it's these establishments that I, a person like myself, and I know a lot of others in the neighborhood that are a little bit older, now going to that crowded area, the young professionals are going, have a little more professional atmosphere. I think you can go to Jerry's restaurant, you're not going to the joint, it's a fine restaurant, it's an upscale restaurant, and I think, I don't think this is going to be a joint establishment, I think it's a fine dining. What you could do too, though, is 
You can have one drink at the bar, and then if you have more than one drink, you have to have food. A lot of places do that. If it's a second drink, you have to have food. Great suggestion. It's difficult to, to Any, Anyone else? Anyone else have any questions? Does anyone want to make a motion to support? Does anyone want to make a motion to oppose? I'd like to make a motion to support. Does anyone second a motion? I'll second. All right. So Phil is a motion to support um, Five Mile Square, um, the application for an all alcohol license at Five Mile Square, and it's been seconded by and I believe all right. Um, all in favor? All opposed? 8 to 1. Congratulations.